the No Money But Dreams podcast is for those millennial dreamers who try to be in the top 1%. It doesn't matter what we've achieved. We wake up every morning with the mindset that we're still broke. We welcome you on our journey in search of that home run, which can change everything. Everything? Everything. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the No Money But Dreams podcast. Today we have a special get. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about why social media is so important for anyone who's an entrepreneur starting their own business or any business that's established for that matter whatsoever. So I think the first thing that we want to speak about is about attention. Yeah, I mean, and this is really you. You taught me this oh, wow. in in your business that. You know, burgers and being in someone's story feed and being front of mind is all about attention and keeping someone's attention and therefore potentially getting them to buy from you in the moment when they are hungry is really, really important in the burger business, obviously. Yeah. But attention is also important for people in the corporate world, right? And any kind of business that is trying to go out there and acquire customers it is all about grabbing someone's attention and you can do that in many different ways and because we all spend so much time on social media social media is a really important component and there was a lot of search or a lot of importance on search for a number of different years but i feel in the last five years social media has become so much more important and i feel there's still a lot of companies out there they don't take social media serious enough and invest enough money to get that attention. Mm. So give us an example of how you are in your business trying to grab people's attention and what your strategy is. Well, I, th I mean, I firmly believe that Burger 28 succeeded for two key reasons. And the first one was obviously first mover advantage into the Better Burger segment. We were definitely one of the first five or ten you know, local burger better concepts which entered the market. And there was clear that there was a lot of demand and there wasn't enough supply. Let me rewind a little bit. So everything is supply and demand. Okay, I think that is the most basic backbone to any business theory or any entrepreneur needs to learn. And <clears throat> I learned that in economics class in high school. And I remember thinking, you know what, this class is the only class in school which has any value to my future or any value in anything. So when it comes to Burger 28, being first in the market when there was a lot of demand and not enough supply obviously allowed us to get in front of a lot of people, a lot of word of mouth, a lot of people talking. So that allowed us to scale from our really, really small location in Mohammed bin Zayed, which was a community in Abu Dhabi, like a suburb, which was just starting. And we were the first restaurant in that community. And you cannot stress or take for granted how important that beginning few, I would say six months was that we opened and within the first month cash flow positive. Mm. There's not many businesses, especially if you're not first mover or the first person to take advantage that can be cash flow positive from, from the first month or it was from day one almost. Yeah. We were covering our costs. So you had a great uh, head start, but then when you're trying to scale, and go across the UAE. Now you have got six branches. Come back one second. So first mover advantage was the first point. The second point was leveraging really cheap ads on Facebook and Instagram, which were extremely cheap. Before social media came, the only people that could get in front of 100,000 people were either a billboard, which there's no way you can afford if you're a small business, advertising on a TV station, which there's no way you can if you're a small business, mm or advertising on the radio, which in my opinion, from what I know, I haven't advertised on the radio, but the price of that has come down because they have to compete with social media. Mm -hmm. You know, So those two things really allowed me to scale extremely fast, the business. But yeah, as you were saying, moving to different Emirates. So you got really cheap ads at the beginning. Yep. Yeah. And then you went out of Abu Dhabi, you had your second location, then you went out of Abu Dhabi. We obviously, scaled into Dubai 
now you're in Sharjah and Ras al Khaimah, all these different kind of places. Now you have a whole country where you can monetize your audience. Yeah. And when you're doing an ad, what I always told you when you were still only in Abu Dhabi is you had something like 80,000 followers and half of them were in other Emirates. Yeah. And the true believers used to drive down to get your burgers, but most like 40,000 people used to saliva over your content yeah. and couldn't really eat. Yeah. Right. And social media is so important that you can get in front of them, but it's also really important that to you be can able feed to convert them. them. Yeah, exactly. So now let's fast forward a couple of years. You're now and then Corona happens. Yeah. And you need to stay in front of people mm -hmm. and they need to order from their house. Yeah. yeah. And then there's this whole delivery kind of rush component. Yeah. So you can advertise on these platforms, Deliveroo and on all the other ones, but mostly people only succeed there when you do discounts. Yeah. Right. So how can you as an established brand still compete for orders and still stay um, relevant, relevant and get people to drive to your location and pick up food to go home, mm -hmm. which is even harder than to get people into your restaurant and, and eat. Yeah. I mean, for me, from the very beginning, the strategy of Burger 28, and, and that's our hashtag, is be different. Mm. So I'm always looking at ways of how to position myself differently from what my competitors are doing. And that's obviously led me to create really crazy things like the Cheese Volcano. And the, the Cheese Volcano came about purely by seeing what could I create and video that could go viral. You know what I mean? Mm. And after trying several different things, that was the one that hit. And even today, we posted a week ago, a video on TikTok, it's almost a million views. Mm. Like even today, three years later, people still <laughs> get excited when they see that, mm. when they see a cheese volcano. And it's not just a cheese volcano, you're cutting yourself short here. I know this because I know how you go about product creation. It is all about creating content to kind of create your own kind of TV show and stay relevant, Yeah. right? You have told me that whether it's Instagram, TikTok, it doesn't matter what media it is, you need to create content that is changing and different that yeah. keeps people engaged, right? So you have done crazy things like donuts where someone eats the whole donut in one go. Yeah. You have done the mozzarella sticks, which you can pull and they never stop pulling. The endless mozzarella the, sticks. The, the endless <laughs> ones. The volcano. There's so many different creations that you have done. The Cheetos in the burger. Yeah where you stay relevant and that's why people keep watching because yeah. if you only had the volcano at some point people would just leave a hundred percent but you're you're vying for people's attention any business today is in the business of attention and making mm -hmm. noise so let's take this away from the burger um, shop that we use now as an experience uh, as an example if you think about you know my business for example we are a brokerage that is like 200 other brokerages, mm. right? How can we grab people's attention and how can we stay relevant and why would they choose us to trade with? Over somebody else. Right? And that is about the kind of content that we put out there. So social media is important and doing ads is important. But I firmly believe that if you don't have a content strategy and don't put the right content out there, people will get bored and will leave you. A hundred percent. You have to stay relevant at all times. And I told you from before, I really see a, a, any content strategy for a business is like a TV show. You mm. have season one, season two, season three, season four. How do you keep people engaged in season one and season two and, and ongoing, not just a one time hit? And what the really interesting part now from a financial aspect is that the return on a view, a and another customer that is coming is so much better than in a lot of the other channels, yeah. right? You you mentioned that at the beginning you were buying really cheap ads, right? Yeah. And you probably don't have exact figures, but when you converted someone five years ago, they're probably still coming to your restaurant. Yeah, so the lifetime value of a click or a conversion is disproportionately bigger than any other medium where you could acquire a customer as well. And once you have acquired them and they do buy in and they feel... Now with social media, obviously you can have that really, really close personal connection. Like in your business, for example, like I, I took a position actually two days ago and I just closed it out and I got an email 
saying congratulations on your positive position. Mm. Like that was such a such like a personal message to get, even if it's automated or whatever it is, but that being part of your strategy, you know what I mean? As in how do you communicate or how do you bond with your customer over whatever product you're creating is so important. Mm -hmm. And social media allows you to do that. Now I'll go on to Bloomberg right now and then see a capital.com advertisement. Now capital.com advertisement again, you know, and it's just ongoing constantly throughout my day. And that's how you retain a customer and keep them always top of mind thinking about you. Yeah, so one is the acquisition, why it's so important. But then two is also to stay relevant and stay in front of them. Because yes, we have an app or you have a store, but there's only so much time that people spend with your product. Yeah. Right. But they still spend a lot of time on these other media where you need to still stay in front of them. Right. I mean, where is everybody's attention? They're staring at their phone. Exactly. You know, and that was the same story when the newspaper came out. Oh, everybody's staring at the newspaper. Mm. The same story when the TV came out. Oh, all the kids, they're just at home staring at the TV. You know what I mean? And then you go into dinner and there's two people sitting having dinner and they're both staring at their phones. So how do you get in front of them? How do you get them to buy into the brand? How do you get them to buy into your story of what you're trying to achieve? And what's the narrative of the business around that? Yeah. So we have stayed pretty broad for now. Let's go a little bit deeper. I want to know from you, as someone that has now done social media for five years and you're almost related to your brand, right? You, you've gone so deep down that the everyone Burger knows 28 you. Burger 28 guy. A Burger 28 guy. Everyone knows you. When you think about content creation, are you thinking about creating content that should go viral? Definitely. I'm thinking about how to get as many views as possible. Hmm. You know, either, I know at the basis of it, yes, it is. How many views? I've created a piece of content, learning and A-B testing, seeing what kind of content is going to get to as many people as possible. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're, you're trying to do. Obviously, it needs to be in a positive light. You don't want somebody looking at it negatively. Like you're not going to show food which doesn't look good to try and get views. But if you can create a product and a piece of content, a great product, a piece of content that showcases that product in a way that is viral, then you're winning. Mm. You know what I mean? And you want people to talk. I want you to go to dinner and somebody be like, dude, did you see that burger place, Burger 28? Check this out. Mm. You know what I mean? And then the whole table sees it. And what kind of elements go for your business into creating something that is viral. Cheese volcano, we know the action of the volcano and the cheese going over the burger is one thing. I think now, especially on Instagram and on TikTok, a lot of it has to do with music. Yeah, for sure. The algorithms are based on music. Yeah. And there is this like undertone of like on the beat and with the music transitions take place and things happen. Mm. Definitely. So when someone uses social media, there's a lot of different kind of elements. The product has to be right. The the thing that you want to communicate has to be right. Mm. The music has to be right. The lighting has to be right. You know, lighting is so important. Definitely. Right? Like pure sunlight. If, if you were to take a picture of something in darkness, food-wise I'm talking here, mm. darkness and then in sunlight and then in fake white light, the sunlight, that warm light, which shows the real original colors of all the ingredients and this and that, will get more engagement than darkness or that pure white light as well. And for me in, in my business, it's all about the kind of research that you're providing, right? Is it top-notch research that you can't just get anywhere else? Yeah, education is so important. Education is something that a lot of people are craving, yeah. especially in the trading world. You can't just read a book and understand how the markets work. But also people don't have time to read a book. Yeah. Like who has the time to read a massive book like that, which says uh, FX trading for, you know what I mean? And or it's all theory, right? Yeah, you exactly. can't really it's apply this. Yeah. But if you can give bite-sized kind of information that people can understand and you keep this going and you keep staying relevant, that is something that a lot of people are looking for. And here, when it comes to education, where you have to really go big is YouTube, in my opinion, because YouTube is the second biggest uh, search engine, but it's also where a lot of people want to consume information and get educated, right? Yeah. So when brands are thinking about what kind of content can I create, think about the, the platform, 
but also think about something. How can you add value? It's always about adding value, yeah. right? For you, it's entertaining and f like food and that kind of stuff. For me, it's more about like what kind of value can I add that other people don't put out there? What can I say that is actually really true and some other brands potentially shy away from? Yeah. Right? Coming back to that adding value thing, posting a video of Burger 28 on your personal Instagram page will probably get a lot of views. Mm. You got what I mean? So by me creating something viral, it means somebody wants to come and share that viral thing with their followers. Mm. So you get this flywheel effect of people coming to share, to share, to share, to share, because at the end of the day, a lot of people now, whether they like it or not, are sharing their whole life on social media. So in order to create value for them, yes, they need to like the food. Yes, it needs to come on time, et cetera, clean, et cetera, et cetera. But by the same token, they want an experience that they can share to their followers. Mm. So that's why some of the products, when I think about why I'm creating them, it's to create this experience, whether it's with the packaging, whether it's with the product, whether it's with the naming, the presentation, you know, even look at Nusrat, for example. He goes even till today and cuts, like in every single day, he's at one of his branches doing the show because the show gets shared people want to go they want to video the show and show their followers yeah so the volcano that you're selling you're selling at cost you make absolutely no profit margin yeah yeah it. there's no point because it's a free yeah and you want everyone to yeah. get it i don't want anyone to think twice yes and once they get it everyone will post it 100 percent guaranteed yeah. it's very rare that you see somebody order it and they're not like like some guys who you can see them like I've trained the waiter and the waitress to see like sir do you want to take a video of it mm. and like the guys who are too cool are like no <laughs> you know what I mean even even when you've said you know what I'm not going to take a video you can't help it because it is such an event yeah that takes place I, I don't think that I've ever come across someone in the store that didn't take a video yeah and that is so amazing because then you're not doing this video posting on your channel, exactly. but someone else is advertising for you for free. Which is which is almost like word of mouth. Like mm. let's not get ahead of ourselves here. The best form of advertising is word of mouth. Mm. If I go and say, Tarek, man, you need to try this, it is the best. Chances are you'll go and try it. For sure. However, with advertising, they say it's around seven or eight times you need to be hit with an ad at the right time. Yeah. If you hit mm. me with an ad after I just ate so much food, that doesn't even count as a one, you know, mm. in order to convert me to go and try a product. Mm. So getting people to share on their social media is like digital word of mouth, you know, and definitely needs to be something thinking about. And that's like, for example, on your side, I, I noticed that when you do a trade, you can share it you can press a button and then share it on social media mm. and be proud of it, mm. you know? And so many people are. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of bad trades and there's a lot of good trades, but the good trades, you you want to show off. Yeah, you have that sense of euphoric, uh, like, happiness, and you want to show and let everybody know that I got it right. Yeah. And the more content pieces you can think of in your business that are shareable and that people want to share, you know, the, the better you will do. A hundred percent. Tell us why social media is so important uh, for, for growing any kind of business. I think that it needs to be like the main part of your strategy as we've, as we've spoken about it. And every business needs to be a content first business now. You need to know which platforms you're gonna use. You shouldn't not use any one platform. You should be multi-platform brand. And test things out, see what works, see what engages people, what gets people talking. You know what I mean? And then whatever that is, double down and try and create more content around it or look further down that direction. But you need to be curious to see what your customers really want to consume from you because it might not be necessarily clear for everybody mm. or every business. What you just said, everyone needs to be a content business first, yeah. is a line from Content Inc., which is a book that I uh, read, which I absolutely agree with and not enough people think about this. They think it's almost like the old way of doing business. I have a product and the people will come. Yeah. No, you have to create the right kind of content for people to come to you. And that's such a strong differentiator between you and a competitor. When you have the right kind of content, people will talk about it, share it, and come to you. Yeah. Other people can be great at advertising and they don't create the same kind of sticky customers because they don't have this kind of content. Yeah, and I think that comes back to the fact that 
especially now more than anything, it's difficult to create a competitive advantage because customers have so much choice. How do you stand out? Mm. You know what I mean? How do you stay relevant? And being relevant really comes down to the story you're telling, you know? And social media gives this opportunity, as I said before, to connect with your customers on a deeper level and tell your story. What are you all about? What do you stand for? What are your values? And that is so important now when people are making purchasing decisions. And you're seeing a lot of brands taking that on, whether that's with their social corporate responsibility or, or whatever it is. But people are not just buying a product anymore, they're buying into the brand. And you have this open playing field to create whatever brand you want, whatever personality you want in this space of, of infinite creativity on all these platforms. It's really exciting and I think people who do harness it properly and businesses that do figure out what works will beat their competition significantly um, over a long period of time. Yeah, and that's not just important for businesses, but it's just as important for building a personal brand, which exactly. we've just which also we just done a, an episode on. So if you uh, if you haven't checked that one out, go and check out the personal brand episode. We're going to leave it at that for, for, for this time. Thank you for listening. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we're going to see you soon. Take it easy. Peace. Peace.